G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a handy little workflow in Dynamo, which is how to measure room dimensions. So the width and the depth of the room using Dynamo and to put this into a room tag. So I'd like to thank um, Pratyush for giving me this request. Um, I know I have a lot of followers in India, so it's always great to get requests from them. And they're always quite creative as well, which I like. Um, so in this case, um, I also noticed you're open to work. So I wish you success and luck in your career search and anyone who can help him, um, feel free to. Anyway, let's get started. So the goal here is to measure the width and the depth of a Revit room and return those two values to a room tag. So by default, Revit can't report back on the dimensions of a room. It can report the area and the perimeter, but not these two proportions. So I'm gonna be using the bounding box of a room in this case to assess its overall width and depth. It's important to note this method won't work for all rooms. Some rooms, the bounding box doesn't really tell you the size of the room. A good example would be a corridor. In this case, we can see that if we assess its bounding box, we're really assessing a bigger sort of area than the room occupies. But it, to be honest, how would you really report the area of this space anyway? It's hard to say. I mean, if the corridor doesn't really have a width, it has a length. So there might be other workflows you could use to report corridor sizes. Typically on projects, I wouldn't show the dimension of a corridor anyway. Um, maybe just the clear dimension using an actual dimension. As well as this, um, it won't work for rooms that are off the axis alignment. So when I say this, I mean that Dynamo has a Y axis that's always orientated towards the default north orientation in the Revit model by the internal origin. So if your project is rotated or rooms are rotated away from this project north orientation, the bounding box isn't going to be aligned to the room itself. Now there are ways, there's ways to process this, but they're quite complex. They usually involve actually assessing the most common orientation of the walls of the room and finding the nearest uh, orientation towards Project North and assessing it this way instead. This would take way too much time for me to show, um, but if anyone is interested in how this is done, uh, definitely get in touch and I can show you an example. But in this case, um, it's not gonna work for rooms that are rotated. So I'm gonna be using Revit 2020.2.2 and also Dynamo 2.3.0 today, but I believe this would work in most versions of Dynamo and it shouldn't require any custom packages. Anyway, without further ado, I'm just gonna jump into Revit and in this case, I'm just gonna be working in a little house project. Now in this case, I've already set up my room tags to report the width and the depth of a room using some project parameters. So the way that I've done this is I've added a couple of project parameters. In this case, I have a shared width and depth parameter and I've applied these on an instance basis to the categories of areas and rooms. So now these two categories of elements will have a width and a depth available. So if I select this media room, for example, you can see now I get these two parameters available. They're of the type length. So you just populate their value in the native unit to the model. So if your unit is in millimeters, type it in in millimeters and you can manage the unit conversion in a tag instead. What I have here is my standard room tag that I use for small projects. And in this case, there's a few things sort of on top of each other, such as areas, rooms, various combinations of the tag to achieve different appearances. But if I just get one of the area fields and I go to my label properties, I've called on those two shared parameters. And in this case, I've separated them using a separator of just an X or a multiply symbol. In the case of the width and the depth, I have formatted the units so that I'm just rounding them to one decimal place, suppressing trailing zeros. Now you may not wish to suppress trailing zeros. You may wish for a, a measurement of three meters to say 3.0. Um, rather than three. Um, let's actually do this just to show it. So as well as this, I've said no unit symbol, but I'm saying that the unit has to be in meters. So even if you're typing your length in millimeters in your native project units, the tag will show the equivalent meters instead. And this is how I typically do this for a tag. I'll just change the depth as well to just not suppress trailing zeros. And in this case, I'm just rounding it to one decimal place. So I'll load this back into my project overwrite my tags. So at the moment, let's say I type in a manual measurement and I say this is 3,500 by 4,250. Well, you can see now I get those two numbers returned in the tag, but obviously if I did this for every single room, we'd be here for a while and it wouldn't be a very exciting tutorial. So let's jump into Dynamo and do this in a slightly more intelligent way. Am I gonna do this for all rooms in the model all at once? Okay, so in this case, I'm just gonna maximize my Dynamo. And first of all, we're just gonna collect all the rooms in the model. So I'm gonna get a category by name. 
It's gonna make a code block and I'm just gonna call in the category of rooms. You could use the string as well if you want. Notice I'm in automatic mode at the moment so everything updates as I go. I'm gonna get an all elements of category node and this will give me all rooms in my model. Now it's important to note this is gonna give you also unplaced rooms as well which we can't assess. So we do have to manage these out of the rooms we're collecting. So I'm going to use an element get parameter by name and we're going to check the areas of all these rooms. So in this case, we're going to get the area parameter and we want to find any rooms that don't have an area. So in this case, we can see we just have a whole bunch of rooms, but let's just go and place a or create an unplaced room instead. I'm going to take my media room, copy it, delete it. And now if I go back to Dynamo, and I'll just copy and paste these nodes to refresh them. We should have an unplaced room in here now. See how that room has no area? So its area is empty, essentially. We can check for this just by making a little code block and we'll just say A equals nothing. So two apostrophes implies an empty string. And in this case, that will form a match for any rooms without an area. I can then apply this to my favorite node in Dynamo, the filter by Boolean mask. So to all my original rooms, I'm gonna mask them by this criteria. And now we can see that we're masking out our rooms that aren't placed in the model. So we don't have to assess these anymore. Now we're just worried about our modeled or placed rooms. Okay, so now the fun part. So we now need to assess the bounding box of the elements. So I'm gonna look for bounding box and we're looking for the one with the little sphere in it. This one for the bounding box, actually no, not the sphere. We're looking for the one by element. So it's still a sphere, it's just a slightly different colored sphere. <laughs> so in this case, this will get the axes aligned bounding box of the Revit element. So not the element's geometry, but the element itself. In the case of rooms, this is sufficient because the only geometry a room has is its actual volume. So now we should have some bounding boxes. And bounding boxes are defined by two points, a minimum point and a maximum point. So we can use these to assess the size of our bounding box. We can also turn our bounding boxes into cubes and assess their properties as well. But to do this, we have to generate geometry, which might be a little bit slow. Now I'm just gonna do this temporarily so you can see the bounding boxes. But all, all the rooms in my model now essentially have a bounding box with a minimum and a maximum point. So in this case, we're not gonna use the cuboids, we're just gonna assess the points. So in this case, I'm gonna take a min point and I've got to find the bounding box minimum point. There we go. And also the max point as well. So the bounding box maximum point. Now I might just show you what this actually looks like. I'm just going to call on the first item from my bounding boxes. Turn it into a cuboid. And also take its minimum and maximum point just so you can see what these points actually are. So this is the Y axis pointing up my page here. So you can see my minimum point is the one with the lowest Z, Y and X value. And on the flip side, we have the one with the maximum X, Y and Z value. So if you think about it, we can take our maximum X from our minimum X and that's our width. We can take our maximum Y from our minimum Y and that's our depth, it's that simple. So we're gonna do that. So I'm just going to go and revert this back so that we're taking all the minimum and maximum points. And you may wish to turn off their preview just to keep everything clean. And I'm just going to do this all in a little code block. I'm going to write that the width is equal to the maximum x. And usually when I type in min or max, I, I like to put the x function on the back because I find sometimes Dynamo tries to grab functions that you don't want. Um, so now I'm going to say max x minus, and I'm going to say dot x and just go back and say min x. So I'm referencing two variables here, my maximum points and my minimum points. Now max comes first, so I'm just going to switch these around. And I'm just going to connect these together. And what we should get is the resultant width of all of our rooms. Um, so we can see we're still working with a list in this case. Um, so we're working with a list of elements. I'm also going to do the same for depth, but in this case, we're going to be doing dot y. So the maximum y minus the minimum y. And now we'll also receive a list of depths. So we've essentially got our numbers now, 
All we need to do is push these into the elements by parameter. So in this case, I'm gonna build a code block and just call on my two parameters I use. So mine is bg underscore dim underscore width one and bg underscore dim underscore depth one. Now this would just be your shared parameters or project parameters, um, whatever you're using to store those two values. If you're putting them into a tag, they'll need to be a shared parameter. So they're probably not project parameters. And um, all we need to do now is just set parameter by name. So we're gonna get element set parameter by name. I'm gonna go retrieve my rooms before I assess them. And I'm gonna do this twice, so I'm gonna get two code blocks. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to manual mode at this point. Now first we need to set our width and we're gonna use this list of widths. Likewise, our depth and this list of depths. In this case, I like to sometimes set these to longest lacing just to be sure that they will by default associate to one parameter per room per dimension. I think by default, the lacing is set to longest. Um, sometimes I just do it anyway, just in case it changes between, between versions, which is, is very unlikely, but you never know. Okay, so at this point, when I run my script, I should expect to see these values populate, right? So I'll just save my script before I do. And if I run, just keep an eye on these numbers. So run, voila, done, right? Too easy. Um, in this case, we can see that we've now got all these numbers. Um, in this case, the, the suppression of zeros still seems to not be occurring, which is interesting. So in this case, when it is an absolute number, it looks like it's not suppressing. And I think this is because I actually have two labels I'm using, one on a different row to the other one. So I do actually need to go just fix that formatting in the other one as well. But if I do disable this suppression of trailing zeros, Load this back in. We should expect to see that dot zero be forced onto the end of our dimensions. Um, so I hope that this has sort of given you a workflow that at the very least gives you something that works for basic room shapes. Um, but I guess, as I, as I noted before, sometimes you won't get the result you're after. For example, this corridor being seven by 3.6. Well, in this case, the depth is actually from here to here, 3.6. So it's not quite what you'd want. Sometimes in the case of other rooms, say bedrooms, for example, well, this bedroom here is gonna think that it's a lot wider than it probably is because from a residential perspective, you would probably say that the width is here. But in this case, the width is 6.7 because the bounding box is going all the way back to the door. So there are other ways you can do this. One way I do sometimes is I take the center of the room and I create a plane cutting through both, both directions in the Y and the X direction and find the width of that element. Um, that is another option you can use as well. And that will usually solve a lot of rooms that have little corridors in their corners. Um, but it's a little bit more of a complicated workflow. So again, I'm happy to discuss with anyone that's interested in finding out how to do that. But I think this will solve at least most generic sort of room challenges. So I hope that this proved useful and that it taught you a little bit more about assessing elements in Dynamo. So the files for this will be on my GitHub as always. But thanks for watching today. And if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I make videos twice a week um, and aim to do so for a long time. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care, bye.